Rory and Tool. And my name is Matt Schultz. And this is How to Be. The podcast where we discuss ancient wisdom, modern hacks, paperback self-help books, and pithy platitudes. In the hopes of figuring out the best way to live this one precious and wild life. How do you like your water? Carbonated with lemon? Blessed with positive intentions and kind words? Or stored in massive canisters in your closet in case of disaster? Join us as we discuss water. Hi, Matt. Hey, Roar. How are you doing today? How's it being back in... uh... How, how's your sleep? Because I know that you were, you know, you traveled, you've been having bad jet lag. Late. The older you get, the worse your jet lag is. Yeah. So last night, sleep evaded. Um, but it was okay. I got a head start on work. I, I probably got like three hours of sleep. Um, I went to school. And I came back and I did not take a nap. I made the executive decision not to take a nap. Oh, so you're recording this un- unslept unslept but i feel fine okay and i think tonight hopefully i'll get a good night's sleep well yeah because you did sleep from 7 p.m to 1 p.m the day before day before is what we call it (laughs) yeah but that was like there was a hollow that was a hollow sleep there was a hollow in the middle of that from like 1 a.m to 4 a.m or something like that yeah, it's still a lot of sleep, though. Oh, sure. <laughs> but you know, so I took like two Benadryls last night to make myself fall asleep. And it's like, there's just nothing stronger than than jet lag. Like the Benadryls are no match for the jet lag. You know, I don't get jet lag. Well, I don't believe that. There, There's so few good things about being me. And that's one of them. I, You're I, not flying seven hours into the future what are you talking about where was i just i guess you were in england yeah from la you're right it was exactly seven hours actually eight or nine or ten i'm not talking about when i go to chicago i'm talking about all my european romps and spinnies (laughs) and i don't get jet lag i the second i'm there i I'm back on there. I'm on that time. And when I come back, I'm back on this time. I guess that's fine. I don't know why it's annoying me. Yeah, I don't know why either. (laughs) Because any I'm like mad at you. Yeah. (laughs) Any time for me is a good time to sleep eight to 10 hours. So it doesn't matter what time it is. Well, have you heard like this is definitely true, but I heard someone talk about how like when you're an insomniac and you tell people about being an insomniac, it's for it's some people. For whatever reason, it's people's impulse to be like, oh, I sleep like a baby. Oh, and that's rude. Yeah, and it's weird. We don't do that with other things, you know, like with like diseases. We're not like, (laughs) my heart works. (laughs) Never, Never skips a beat. I have never, I can honestly say I've never, ever reacted that way to someone who has insomnia. Like I've never felt, I feel so much deep compassion. For people with insomnia. Didn't you just? Didn't you just? I'm I'm jet suffering lag. from jet lag right now. Right I'm, now. Jet lag is a temporary solvable problem. And I think it's interesting that I don't have jet lag because it's like a little unusual. It's not interesting when someone's a good sleeper. One might say that it's a chronic problem for someone who lives between two continents. Oh, do you okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Sure. <laughs> well, I sincerely apologize for telling you I don't don't get jet lag. No, no, no. I'm just I'm just playing it out a little bit, my anger and trying to find some justification for it. There, you there is none. Frustrated at the beginning of the conversation. Well, I wasn't. You know, I've had a hard day. Can I oh. tell you what else was hard about my day? Yeah, please do. This morning. I cut my thumb with a knife. Oh, that honestly, you know, my thumbs aren't cut, just so you know. 
<laughs> my gums are totally intact. <laughs> you can wash your hands whenever you want and not have to worry about changing the Band-Aid. And literally, the Band-Aid cannot come off. It's the type of cut. The Band-Aid is a, a key part of what's holding my body together right now. Take it away and all the blood will just drain out of me. God, that's... Yeah. Honestly, there's nothing worse than a cut in an uh, unfortunate place. Even if it's a tiny cut, it's still horrendous. It's horrendous. And it's a it was a deep cut. I just bought this knife. So it was very sharp. Um, and yeah. And, and then you're like, why did that happen? Why did I do that now? Now this is my day. It so could have it. It could have very easily not been my day. One it's, thanks, one thanks, because yeah. we're not aware of the way in which th that cut was written into the very fabric of creation at the Big Bang, along with everything else. A cut, a burn, a, some, a fall, that is so sliding doors. It's the most sliding doors moments of most people's lives. Like, oh, no, I'm so close to not ruining my life. Yeah, I could have. Yeah, it was. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then. No, I won't actually tell. Uh, should I tell this story? It's yeah. A little gross. But I was like putting something in my backpack today. And all of a sudden I was like, where's the bandaid? It's gone. I can't find it. Uh -huh. And then, you know, it's a new semester at school. There were a lot of new people there. I met some people, introduced them to myself to some people, was chatting. Then I walk a few more steps. It It's on my collar. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. Wow. <gasps> I have another story of today. I know you texted me when I woke up that you got into a fight. A terrible fight. <laughs> now, I did not ask to speak to the manager, <laughs> which I think shows that the Karen discourse is working. Okay, for you. At uh, Karen. Yeah, like here. I was talking to Claire about this earlier. I think that the what separates a chronic complainer from a true Karen mm -hmm. is of is know is knowing when to stop. Or not even knowing when to stop, but stopping. Okay, like the Karen will not stop until justice is served and justice will never be served. So they'll just keep crusading and crusading. But don't and, you think another key factor is like that the Karen is not always in the right? Yeah, very. I guess that's true. But the Karen always thinks they're. Yeah, I guess we're talking about living in a world of objective truths. Yeah. So, OK, the Karen is very often not actually correct and is just often being racist or outrageous. But let's talk about righteous Karens for a second. Karens who have truly faced some sort of injustice in the public sphere. Yeah, a, a line cutter, let's say, or a, um, you know, you, your coupon's not scanning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you speak up, you make your voice heard, the the chips fall where they will. Can you accept it and now move on? Or will you burn down the store and yourself? In the process. In the process. Okay, so, so yeah, tell the story. I haven't heard it. Today, I mean, I was at this horrible grocery store where it's always chaotic. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a guy, two people in front of me in the 10 items or less line mm. with a full ass basket a f not a basket a cart a cart okay. we're talking a 60 item haul this is <sighs> groceries for a family for maybe you know maybe a week and a half even wow and the guy behind him in line had almost just as egregious really? uh, a haul as that <laughs> not quite as bad it was probably like 30 items you know, it's probably like a three day shop rather than a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm like, that's you You got too much stuff to the He's guy. Like, in front of you. No, to the first guy. 
to 60 plus. Yeah. And he's like, I don't care. Oh, you don't care. (laughs) You don't care about society. You don't care about rules. (laughs) I said that. (laughs) You don't care about order. (laughs) And then I turned to the the guy at the register and I'm like, he's got too many items. You can't ring him up. And the guy was like, what am I going to do? And I was like, take some pride in your register. This is your (laughs) register. Wow, you're killing me. This is so funny. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta own your register. <laughs> like, you know, like you should, it should be moving along. You should be so like, oh my God. And then the next guy, he, he, so he runs him through the next guy. He does the most insane thing. He rings up 10 of that guy's items and then says, I'm going to, I'm stopping at 10. What? The, re- well, the that guy- cashier? Yeah. So that's how he enforces the 10 items or less? It's almost worse than not doing anything. So that guy freaked out. And actually, like, he, that's that's kind of a, a, a grievance, too. You know, like, now I he's... so livid. It's like, what do you want me to do? Get back in line? Yeah. yeah. How do I even so... explain that to the other cashier? Like, oh, these are already paid for groceries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's what would bother me the most is explaining that. So that guy, then I, I realized that the the register guy was going to have to relent. And I was going to have to look the other way. Of course. Yeah. So I did. I, I, I think I literally looked the other way because I can't bear the sight of injustice. <laughs> you know. And then I realized that it was t- I had made my voice heard. <laughs> <laughs> you did what you could. I did what I could. You stood up. It was time to let it go and move on in a broken world and me, a broken man within it. I would love to be there. I have, I don't think I've ever been there when you really laid it to someone like that. Yeah, it was. And it was so egregious, you know, but like. What am I am I supposed to not be outraged by such moments? Am I supposed to be like, whatever? Yeah, you are. Lines are yeah, uh, that's the for your own mental health, I guess. Yeah. But I personally would be like, that's the hero we need if I was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I was there, I would be like, I would be behind you like a little chihuahua. Like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And like, there were a lot of us in line who are like doing the awkward, like holding six items clutched in your arms thing. Well, did anyone else seem to support you in this? No. No. In fact, the girl next to me who also had like items awkwardly clutched in her arms, she was like, let it go. like don't get me started on you yeah if only i could lady if only i could i'm working on it uh, anyways that okay so all of that jet lag a cut thumb band-aid uh, on the collar band-aid on the collar uh a line dispute line injustice it's been it's been a hard day i'm sorry but i'm trying to live in gratitude i, I hope that we um, hope maybe this uh, recording will give you a little pep in your step. Why are you giggling? <laughs> it just that at the thought that I'm trying to live in gratitude. <laughs> like, I'm so clearly not putting my energy there. I really should, though. <laughs> Have we done a gratitude episode? No. Well, maybe this should be it. Like we should just derail right now. And no, I'm kidding. Oh, okay um today we're talking about something very different no no easy segue i would say we're talking about water drinking water lots Potable. of hydration water and our you know culture's obsession with it and should we be obsessed with it and are we too well hydrated and all this and that um so i guess i can start with just spewing a few little facts about water okay how much water should you be drinking a day as a man, Matt? 
um, not eight cups a day. You'd have to be an idiot to believe in that myth. <laughs> I don't know the real answer. 15.5 gallons cups like a, a cup like a measuring eight cup. ounces yeah okay and for women it's 11.5 but 20 percent of that can come from food oh yeah you get a lot of it from food also from coffee people are like coffee doesn't hydrate you it does it does anything any beverage was basically hydrating you yeah yeah Basically, not as much as water necessarily, but I think the difference is somewhat negligible. Um, well, yeah, it's just that coffee makes you pee a lot, apparently. Mm, but you know what else makes? You... Yeah, it's a diuretic. Water. M- water. Yeah, is water a diuretic? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nothing makes me pee like water. I have to pee right now. I'm always tired, and I always have to pee. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to I never get jet lag, I sleep like a baby. Does it even matter if I've never ever not been tired? Oh, what like you're tired point? all the time. Yeah, what is the point of all the sleep I get? I don't know. But today at school I was like I was like, wow, like being in here's a little, little gratitude. Being in rabbinical school like I get to study exactly what I'm passionate about. My teachers are so amazing. I was thinking like all of this would be so delightful if I wasn't sleepy through it. And this isn't just the jet lag. It's a, oh, it's just something I always feel when I'm in a in a school setting. Oh, yeah. Sleepiness, ruining life, sucking the joy out of life. Yeah, like what there's like people who are buzzing with energy all the time. They must be drinking more water than us. <laughs> That's the thing is no one drinks more water than me. Okay. I'm always drinking water. Like last time I was eating with friends and the carafe of water came and sat on the table and my friend just put it right next to me and said, let's just leave this by Rory. <laughs> oh my God. So um, I went to a Japanese restaurant when I was in the States you know, like a suburban Japanese restaurant where you get that glass goblet of really icy water that they're always refilling for you. It's not just Japanese restaurants. It's like just a certain type of casual family restaurant. And yeah, like a carafe, a carafe of water. Yeah. But something about that glass goblet with a stem. A glass goblet with a stem? Yes. Do you know the type of glass I'm th- thinking of? No. A short, blunt stem. It's not like a wine glass. It's like a Stella Artois glass. More. And they, it's big? Oh, it's big. And they pour it around? No, that's your individual glass. And then oh, they... sorry. Okay. Maybe this image isn't hitting, but for me, I was like, this... This is a, a very unique water experience for me. The the particular coldness and iciness of restaurant water mm-hmm. in America, because they don't do that for you in Europe or in Israel. They're not giving you that icy, icy water. Well, can I tell you that that's my problem when I travel internationally, is that I am such an American hog just asking for refills of my water. like. Oh, look what your hair just did. It's flipped. It's very feathered today. Yeah, Uh, very Farrah faucet. Very Farrah. Faucet. Water and all connects. Yeah. It's like, okay, so I I need, I drink so much water, as I've mentioned. But it's not because I'm like trying to drink a lot of water. It's because I'm always like sleepy. I'm always thirsty. Okay. So like when I go traveling and I'm in Europe, I need a ton of water just to keep me keep this my thirst quenched Mm -hmm. but i feel very judged yeah they're they're like yeah Yeah. they don't get it everything is less water in europe the toilets are less full of water yeah yeah absolutely it's like i don't understand why i'm so thirsty or us americans are so thirsty and europeans are less thirsty um, they drink small portions of incredibly rich water. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and it's just very satisfying. Well, I actually looked into this recently, and there were people who were saying, no, that the water is just better, more hydrating in Europe because there's more minerals in it. That sounds like nonsense. And it it is nonsense, yeah. Wow, okay, I'm thinking of so many water-related topics they want to talk about all of a sudden. What leapt to my mind just now is, you remember like that thing about like saying words to water and like it oh. reforms the crystals? Oh, yeah. No, can you explain now, that, that out a little bit more? Okay, there was this Japanese scientist we i dare i dare <laughs> say who <laughs> i said know that if, yes. if you say if you say nice words to water the crystals align themselves in these beautiful symmetrical shapes when you look on when you like flash freeze it and look under a microscope versus when you say mean words to it 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 looks distorted and evil um, and I guess this was supposed to show it's been debunked, I believe, but it was supposed to show that like our human thought energies affect matter. And there's a version of this that's become like this YouTube challenge where people put rice and water in a jar in two jars and like say nice things to one and bad things to the other. And like, apparently, like the bad one will rot and the nice one will stay fresh. Yeah. My question is, how stupid can people be to believe that that's a thing? Well, I kind of believe it for some it, reason. Wait, <laughs> is it the it has to be the cadence of what you're saying or the tone of what you're saying? Because I don't think rice and water speak human languages. Yeah, but maybe like it's not about the word maybe it's about like our feeling what associated with the word who like, knows or maybe I'm it's saying. like because we live in a matrix like or... what we, like if you're singing a jolly song let's say a wordless jolly song to some water and mm -hmm. then at the other water you just shout nonsense but they're not words but you're just angry and you're like rah, 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 rah. yeah thing is that what we're supposed to believe? No, I think you're supposed to believe that even if you were like Hitler, like that would make the water bad. Even if you said a oh, bad really? word. In, yeah. Okay, that's idiotic. Um, I don't know. You know, I think maybe, <laughs> we should, maybe we should try the rice experiment and see. Wouldn't that be fun for our listeners? Yeah. You know what we both have abundance of in our houses? rice and probably jars too <laughs> i have no jar i mean i just moved i had so many oh. jars in this place i'm, I'm buy at, some pasta sauce yeah i really need i'm i jars are so important for the home you gotta have several jars okay we're gonna do the rice experiment and report back yeah okay but just in case just just in case in the meantime until the results get back we advise Saying nice words to your water. Love. Nice. I also drink a lot. Like the rise of sparkling water, bubbly water. Have we seen a me more meteoric rise in our lifetime? Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, so I forget the guy's name who invented soda water. Joseph Priestley, I Joseph, think. Joseph Soda. Joseph Soda. So he was also the person who discovered oxygen um which is a pretty major discovery but he said that soda water was his happiest discovery oh of course and it's true there's something joyful about soda water i think you've probably heard me make this spiel before i think it's a relic from a, a time when we believed that science had the power to improve upon nature rather than just destroy nature. When was this invented? Um, I think it was like the 1800s. Dare we check? Okay. Joseph Priestley, chemist and natural philosopher. Yeah, 1770. He lived 1773 to 1804. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So time you know, to be right alive right in the thick of a lot of 
fascinating technological changes that really probably felt like they're making the world better unlike our you know our technology today which is just i mean you probably disagree with this analysis but like you know our I think we we have much less faith in progress than the Joseph Priestleys did. We're a little worried that it's destroying us now. But I think, yeah, so the, the age of soda water, I mean, it's so clearly an improvement on creation. Yeah, it, you're absolutely right. And the way that it is so innocent, yet so good, unlike soda, which is sugary and spice our blood sugar and decays our teeth. Yes, yeah, soda water. It's just water that leaps out of the glass to meet you. <laughs> Give you a little kiss. It's on your tongue. <laughs> and, you know, this this comes from one of our listeners, Lucy. Mm. She pointed this out to me. It's water you can't chug. Oh, which is hard for you, which is makes you slow down. Because let me tell you, Matt Schultz does not sip on a glass all day long. This is a man. I'll be on the phone with him and he'll go down underwater. It sounds like he's down on <laughs> water for like 20 seconds and then come back up like. <clears throat> it just drowned his body in a trough of water. Yeah, I like I like to be forcefully slowed down in my favorite cafe. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I love about it is that they have soda on tap, which is like obviously the best thing ever, way better than soda on a bottle. And you can get it in a pint glass, like for a beer, like for a pint of beer, just a big old soda. And I'll sit there and I'll nurse that soda for an hour. I mean, it's truly what gets me through my work day is having my spin drift. And it's what gets me through. It's my joy at the end of the day is having my big Pellegrino at night. Oh, I wish I had soda water right now. You know, it's terrible though. It's flat soda water. Yeah, it's really disappointing. It's like it doesn't. You'd think it's just water again. <laughs> it's kind of not. It's not. It's something else. It's too, especially if it's a natural sparkling water, and then it goes flat. It's really like thick or something or. Yeah, it tastes flavorful. thick. There's a taste. There's a taste. Tangy. Terrible. Getting tangy. Yeah. Um, but okay. Someone I went I'm like, when did I start drinking all this water? Because when I was little as a kid, like there wasn't this like water culture. Like I never drank water as a kid. It was like a sip at the water fountain. For lunch, it was like a juice box. And there we go. That's my hydration for the day. I had water at dinner. That was it. Okay. So do you remember in college, my computer had those fruit stickers on it? Um, Of course. And I also remember your gallon, the gallon you would carry around. Oh, I brought that to college. Okay. And that had the fruit stickers on it too. Yes, of course. Those, that I started in high school and that was part of a... uh a weight loss regimen. Say that had to have been a campaign to lose weight. I think that's when I started drinking water too. And okay, I don't think I've ever said this out loud before, but this was my weight loss theory. Okay. Uh huh. It was like it was about percentages. <laughs> if you drank a giant, if you if you drank a a, a cup of water, and it had one crumb from a donut in it well <laughs> oh, wow. i love this okay you see where this is going <laughs> i was like i was like that couldn't possibly you couldn't pos- your body just wouldn't notice the donut because it's like no i'm drinking water so extend Ergo. that thinking <laughs> you eat a whole donut and then drink 10 gallons of water <laughs> Your body is going to treat that donut like a crumb Mm -hmm. in the water. Mm -hmm. And so my plan was to have all the food I ate just be some crumbs, crumbs of chicken, crumbs of donuts, whatever. Yeah. In what was essentially my one true meal, a giant life size (laughs) glass of jug of water. Yeah, you had this big 
like and it worked i was skinny it was a, yeah that's why it was essentially a uh a uh water cooler a mini water cooler that you would yeah. around, and i you <laughs> I would tease you for it and you'd always hold it up and be like this is the exact amount of water a man should be drinking a day <laughs> <laughs> to properly to properly balance so it. incredibly cumbersome and that is a big thing i want to talk about the type of person the person who carries around a giant, heavy water bottle everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. Where are you going that they don't have water? And a means to drink that water. I know. I'm in a relationship with one of these people, so it's sensitive. Well, have you ever asked him? The biggest, the heaviest water bottle. I mean, I carry around a water bottle, too. I've gone through phases with it. Um, Why do you carry around a water bottle? Let's interview you. Okay, so first of all, um, what if I don't like the glasses where I'm going? What if they're yucky? <laughs> <laughs> well, how often do you wash your water bottle? Um, not that often, like once a week. See, because water bottles are really yucky to me. I'm like, this is some old ass tepid water that you filled up in the beginning of the day and it's like an insane amount of disgusting water that no one wants to drink yeah it's terrible it's really gross um yeah and you know the person i'm dating with his giant water bottle is what a daily kind of... water bottle washer well good for him now what kind of water bottle is it that he has well, it's actually an insane water bottle. It looks like a silo. It looks like a grain silo. And it is a Brita. It has a Brita filter built into it. Hmm. So it's like a, a heavy piece of agricultural equipment. Okay. So let me give you some scenarios. Would he bring a water to this water bottle to a movie theater? Yeah. <laughs> would he bring it to a restaurant actually no not to not to a movie theater but if if we like go out shopping for groceries a long day of a long grocery haul like a, a car ride and yeah well no we're walking from okay. store to store in the hot israeli sun that's that's water bottle worthy okay um if the trip requires some sort of big bag that you're already carrying with you the water bottle is going in. This is my thing. It's like, it's weighing you down, people. Like, free yourself from the weight, the literal weight. I know, the weight water. of water. It's like, everywhere you go, there is water. Yeah, there's there's water, water everywhere. So, okay, but on a grocery trip, there's no water. You're you're without water. You're at a grocery and store. It, I guess it's different for us. We're going to lots of different stores in the market. <laughs> How long it's are you gone for? Hours. Oh, it's arduous. Oh, really? Like more than three hours? Like probably like two hours. Okay. Well, this is the thing is I think we all, I think that it's interesting that people want to carry around these giant water bottles. And I, of course, know and love people who do it too. You know, I'm yeah. not, you know. It's very of our time. It's so of our time. And it's usually like a more like outdoorsy type person who does it. And mm -hmm. younger folks. Okay. I feel like they have created. The Visco girls. Yeah. Visco girls. And they're. What's the water bottle with the Coco Pelli on it? Why am I forgetting? The aqua it? flask. No. Uh, Hydro Hydro flask. flask. Hydro flask. That hideous mm -hmm. logo. Um, and, you don't like Coco Pelli? <laughs> um, <laughs> and the the Stanley Cup. That's a, wait, like all these Gen Zers with their water bottle personalities. Mm, yeah, like drinking water and having the water bottle is their personality. Back in the day, you had to get a generic water cooler jug and <laughs> add personality yourself with fruit stickers. It was Nalgene or nothing, first of all. <laughs> yeah, it was Nalgene or nothing. 
or like this, like this type of like generic sport bottle. Oh the yeah, sport bottle. Sport bottle. Gatorade. Um, that green Gatorade water bottle. Yeah, those were kind of fun. Just drinking that like the opaque plastic. plastic. Yeah. Yeah, gross. <laughs> Sitting in the hot car drinking that microplastic. Um, I just like when I was growing up, like we just had like bottled water. Like we didn't have too much of a concept of I think it's because we all believed in recycling then. Yeah. And so I we didn't have a concept of like waste wasting bottles of water i didn't really like conceptualize that until like my early 20s yeah i still love a bottle of water sometimes that's okay i gotta say yeah a nice big evian or fiji now i when i go to the airport now i stop buying the cheapest bottle of water oh you get the fiji i get the spring for the fiji the evian because i'm i'm like dasani is as we all know disgusting aquafina is nasty smart water is just tap water i like smart water it's like i'm just gonna spend the extra dollar it's already a 30 dollar bottle of water i'll spend 31 smart water i don't think it's just water don't they do reverse hydrolysis on it or something i mean it's not spring water it's not spring water yeah yeah well, I would prefer that. I don't want them damaging some natural spring. Is it damaging? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my goodness. That book I read recently, Leave the World Behind. Okay. I told you about it. It's about like an apocalyptic event. But m- the main part of the apocalyptic event that we see the characters actually go through a lot of it is kept vague, but what we see them go through is that they lose Wi-Fi. It's kind of a book about the horror of not having Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. And like the dad's whole character journey is just about like how little he knows about anything. And it's all stuff like that. Like, well, does it hurt, harm the springs? I, I don't know. How, how do they get it from this? You know, just like... Yeah. What a vague, loose grasp of the world we we have when it really comes down to it. Now, I do want to talk about the water wars, but I also want to talk about a glass of lemon water in the morning. Well, choose your own adventure. You pick one. Have you ever been on the lemon in the water in the morning thing? No. Really I, a religion. I, I think maybe, you know, a couple times in my life, like literally not even a couple of periods, like a couple of times, but let it, 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 there is actually no benefit to it. Why not? It's a glass of water. Oh, I drink a glass. lemon juice. I drink a glass of water in the morning, but adding well, lemon well, this... to it doesn't, doesn't do anything. It gives you vitamin C. Okay. <laughs> But that's not why people do it. They, they they do it because they think there's some sort of like diuretic and diet property to it, I feel like. Yeah. It makes up my nice. digestive system. Yeah, it doesn't? Not more than a glass of water. Mm. Well, okay. Yeah, that's that's probably for the best. I, I You know, the lemon part of it was always drawback. I like the water in the morning. The lemon, <laughs> it's just that feeling of having your teeth all lemony. Yeah. Like sure. the enamel has been stripped off of yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I think one of the biggest like diet culture myths is this, this idea of like acidic foods versus alkaline foods and how like those are processed differently in your body, like alkaline water or whatever. Yeah. Cancer can't form in the alkaline body. Someone <laughs> said that to me once. I forget who. And that just isn't true at all. Like, do you know how acidic your stomach is? It's like way more acidic than any food that has ever existed. You're right. It's full of acid. Like, that's all it is. It's like, it doesn't matter if you're eating. And and a lemon is an alkaline food for some reason. Well, it's acidic outside your body, but it becomes alkaline inside your body. Like, this does not make any sense. How could that be a thing? That's why, it, yeah, it's 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 a religion. It's like transubstantiation in the Catholic Church. Yeah, it's like it every, requires faith. Every healthy food is alkaline, and every bad food is actually acidic, like sugar. 
Yeah, alkaline water. I do like the word alkaline. Yeah, it's a nice word. It's like al- alkaline. <laughs> it's my daughter, alkaline. <laughs> Maybe it's um, alkaline, just as it is for a girl. Alkaline. What if you submitted? There's this woman on Instagram who Matt and I follow, and she's a name consultant. And one thing, like of the, you know, she'll come up with names for your child, and you might send her a name that you like, but you aren't. You're not going to name your kid that. So, what if you sent alkaline? What would she come up with? I think Elka comes to mind. <laughs> Yeah, she, like Elka or yeah, El- Abigail maybe. Alika. Alika. Coraline. <laughs> Coraline. Yeah. Caroline. <laughs> to switch topics, the water wars. I mean, we keep being told that water is going to be the most, it is a very precious resource. And in the, future of climate change we're not going to have enough yeah well i definitely think we need to stop pooping and peeing into giant buckets of clean water is is it clean yeah it's completely fresh water it's from a tap sick Uh, it's not it's touched your toilet but when it came (laughs) out of the tap it was clean and what's the water level in a toilet in israel low ah okay it's a low rider what's like the logic behind the big bowl of water here i don't know but it's so big and full it's kind of insane it's interesting is it just a custom like oh like when we didn't when we first started just with toilets they we just filled it up yeah i don't no, I would love to hear the the history. The theory that. behind what's better. Yeah, because it's like its cup runneth over. And then, you know, if heaven forbid the toilet clogs, you don't have a lot of leeway. <laughs> You're like, maybe if I flush this time, it'll work. Oh! You, don't have, <laughs> you don't have the kind of leeway you need to be making those guesses yeah i mean but that uh you know we're told to drink all this water every day to stay healthy and hydrated and for our skin and for our skin and our cell health and yada yada blada blada but uh, we're not isn't that bad for the environment if everyone's drinking gallons of water water a day yeah, it definitely is. But also it's like it's like what you said before about like a lot of this being a lot of our water coming from our food, you know, like think of how much water it takes to grow a cow. Oh, so true. Yeah, so much water to grow a cow, so much water to grow crops, so much water to wash our bodies, to wash our clothes. Yeah, the washing of the body, the washing of the clothes. Yeah, we live a very water-dependent life. Water-abundant, too. You know what? Okay, so uh, I had this... I I don't want to call this person a friend, um, but I knew a person once who (laughs) was a real plant gay, had a real forest in the house. Yeah. And... I was like, it's not kind of like a waste of water. I said that once, which is maybe like an annoying thing to say. But his response was like, no, it's not a waste of water. Like things like this are a waste of water. And he held up something plastic. And it's like, it takes water to make this kind of stuff too. All these machines are cooled with water and use water in ways that we like wouldn't necessarily expect yeah i mean like to make a dog toy takes like i don't know three cups of water i mean anything new like that's one of the huge criticisms of fast fashion is like all the water waste making your like cheap forever 21 tank top you know yeah it's a little hard for me to picture like where does the water come in (laughs) well cotton is a crop right okay 
That I get. And uh, (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Processing. I know that linen is very water intensive. Yeah. But then it's like, it's like this algorithm, this complex math that you have to do. It's like, okay, linen takes a lot of water, but like, it's a really durable fabric that you could have for a long time. Yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. blah, And we're all back at square one. Yeah. Which, so, which brings us back to the answer is always just less, 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 just less. But not less water consumption. More, 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 (laughs) more. And say nice words to it. Are they being told to drink they alkaline? Water? Alkaline. <laughs> In Europe, are they being told to drink that much water? No, I think they would find it vulgar. I like a doctor wouldn't say, "Oh yeah, you need to drink more water." To an Italian, French women don't get dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> They really um, don't see, and I like I said, I'm thirsty. That's why I'm drinking. Okay, do you remember this discussion we had once? Whereas, like, thirst is less real than hunger. Yes, because like, and you were like, "Why do you think that?" Because thirst is in the mouth and hunger is in the stomach. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, I guess that is why I think that." Like, when I'm hungry, I feel like this really complex, like mechanical process is happening in my body like my stomach is turning over and over looking for food Mm. whereas when i'm thirsty i just feel this dryness in the mouth that and i'm like wouldn't some water feel great on that yeah see for me like thirst can feel really desperate but i think it's because you've been you didn't you deny your you've denied yourself food before so the hunger becomes more pronounced but you would never deny yourself water yeah, I've never, well, I've denied myself water on like fast days, holidays, like Yom Kippur yeah. right around the corner. Ugh, and it's like, awful. yeah, you get really thirsty. But yeah, it just feels more like, a, like, I don't know, it feels less mechanical. It feels more, I don't know, there's something different about it. But I do find it interesting thinking about where we feel the desires for different things. Mm. Like that sleepiness is like so in the eyes. <laughs> and like thirst is like really in the mouth yeah and and in the brain like the thirst headache oh yeah that's true but it's not the same as the mouth in the in the head when you get a headache you have to think about why your head hurts and it could be because you're thirsty yeah um yeah and if you've ever had your heart broken like you really feel it in your heart oh you truly do. <laughs> um, and that brings me to my ninth point about um, uh, <laughs> one time you said to me, like, foods aren't healthy or unhealthy. They're either guilt. They're just like degrees of guilt and how the least guilty food for you is a cucumber. Mm-hmm. Because it's basically yeah. just drinking moisturized water <laughs> in yeah, solid that's form. My friend Sophia calls cucumbers crunchy water. <laughs> And yeah, it's true. It's just like, yeah, I mean, and that's, um, you know, a solution to the, you know, if you want to stay hydrated, pack, pack a cucumber. Yeah. Instead of that heavy ass water bottle. Pack a cucumber. That's probably one of your glasses of water. Yeah. There's, well, I remember one time you said to me, that it's unbelievable that a watermelon is 92% water because like everything that a watermelon is to us physically is contained in that remaining 8%. I think it's actually like more than that. I think it's, can you look that up? I I just looked it up before this episode. I wanted to bring it up. Yeah. It's like, how is all of that like that hard green shell, that green, that pink, those seeds, all of that is just, you know, but that's, that's the thing about life. Everything is, everything is more what it isn't than what it is. Oh, interesting. My Tibetan singing bowl. (laughs) 
that it's all about the hollow, the the negative oh, space. Oh, na- nasty! <laughs> what a nasty comment! I didn't mean it like I don't know why the word nasty came out. Like that comment's <laughs> so good, it's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we're 60 percent water right 60 70 60 something depending on the day we're more wa- like how is that possible i feel so solid yeah i don't feel like such a water creature um you know who who loves to bring that up so i watched you know this have you ever seen the show you probably haven't because you're not like deep into YouTube like I am. <laughs> so it's like a show called Middle Ground. And they basically have two people from two sides of an issue have an unproductive argument. Okay. And I watched one that was astronomers versus astrologers. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. And this guy was like, well, you know, the moon affects tides and and we're 70% water. And yeah. it's like, people love saying that. People they who are like love into it. that love saying that. They and obviously, it. people also love like bringing up quantum physics to like justify any magical belief that they like, have. Like, what do you mean? Like, well, according according to quantum science we're all just energy and it completely depends on your perspective okay but reality depends on your perspective i agree that that's a cliche trope but don't you believe that too yeah (laughs) and isn't that what a ghost is to me i use quantum physics to justify the belief in energy that stuck around in the form of a woman in a victorian gown crying into a kerchief Yeah, she is Quanta. <laughs> She's just her energy was so She's strong. Trapped Quanta. I do believe that. But okay, like you love physics, I think, because it is intrinsically magical and also connects to your magical beliefs. I wouldn't say I don't use it to justify this or that belief, but it does fill me with a kind of wonder. It fills me with wonder, and I find that reading about it and watching videos about theoretical physics is sort of a spiritual practice in the sense of cultivating wonder and awe at the universe. Like, you know, the, you know about the the double slit experiment. No, it's like. Okay, if you shoot particles at this board that has two holes in it, it, the particles will behave like a wave, up and down, up and down. And sometimes it'll get through the top hole, sometimes through the bottom hole. And then when you see the impact pattern on on the wall behind that, like imagine you're shooting paintball, like a spray of paint. Yeah. You'll see like it's distributed between these two holes. But if you add a camera, if you add an observer, all of a sudden it stops behaving like a wave and starts behaving like a particle and it chooses one side to go through and not the other. The presence of an observer fundamentally changes the reality. The particle is like, oh, someone's watching me. I've got to decide like what to be, how to be. It's like that is weird. That is just weird. And I don't know what it means. And I don't know what it means about Victorian ghosts. And I don't know what it means about saying nice words to water. But I do know that it means that the world is a very mysterious place that we don't understand. That is truly unbelievable. And I have a question. What is Mm -hmm. quantum physics versus theoretical physics? I think that theoretical physics is just any part of physics that you can't actually verify with experiments, but is a lot of deep space stuff, maybe. Yes. And like stuff where you're like, okay, there's like a weird amount of gravitational force here that we can't account for. So that Mm -hmm. means there must be 
a particle that we we haven't discovered yet yeah. that accounts for that, but you can't actually test it. You're just like making deductions based okay. on the math and things like that. And then sometimes like with the Higgs boson particle, mm. I think that was a theoretical physics that then became real because they discovered it. That was a big deal in a yeah. way things aren't a big deal anymore like all the alien talk i feel like we got a lot more excited about the higgs boson <laughs> it's crazy what they're doing to us with the aliens this slow <laughs> reveal <laughs> it's crazy they're like okay let's show them the body of an alien but let's show it to mexican congress but that's not real Okay, but they're they're doing something. Okay. What was it? It was like a cake. I don't know, but like, why would aliens be? Why, why would they look like humans so much? So it's symmetrical with four limbs, two eyes. Well, it's possible that that's just what things look like. It is possible. It's possible, like that, when life evolves, that's like a a natural way for it to sure. evolve. Because also, like, I always find it insane that ev literally everything on Earth looks like that, even a fly. Oh, yeah. Symmetry is like, a, on Earth is incredibly. But not just symmetry. Two eyes, two little nose holes in a mouth. That's kind of Unless symmetry. you're. What? That's a little bit symmetry, though, no? But the one mouth, the two eyes. What about a spider? The, a spider, too. It has a billion eyes, but they're. They're concentrated in two big balls. Mm, big balls. Balls. <laughs> balls. More symmetry. Yeah, the the bilateral symmetry. It's like... Well, and that's yeah. what makes the deep ocean so scary is like there's asymmetrical creatures down there. Yeah. And that's freaky deaky. Because it's like something to do with like this, the way we've evolved with the sunlight. Yeah. Versus deep oceans not having sunlight results in asymmetry. Asymmetry or, or radial symmetry. What's radial symmetry? Radial symmetry is like a, a starfish or oh, a okay. jellyfish. That's exactly what came to mind when you said radial symmetry, a starfish. Yeah. Huh. Ooh, freaky. Starfish are freaky. Yeah. Gross. Ugh! Sorry. Oh, wow. That was visceral. I had a dried starfish when I was a kid that was like on my dresser. Yeah. And one of its legs broke and it was filled with this like black vermicelli noodles. Oh, it was so gross. Ew. Yeah. Yikes. Dried yeah, you think starfish. it's just this like cute dried thing? You think it's like a seashell? Harmless? Totally. And then it's full of disgusting body parts. Ugh. I haven't yeah. thought of that in 30 years. It's so, <laughs> it's so, pacing back. It's so HGTV beach house decor. And to think it can, yes, the horrors of life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anything else we want to say about water? Um, well, is it how to be? Do we want to give a little verdict? Yeah, I, I can't not drink a lot of water. But I will say that one of the reasons why I think I'm so thirsty is because I drink water. Like drinking water begets the need for more water. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You never start with this, you know, 1800 glasses of water a day. Like when I go to a restaurant, it's or a bar it's like i can never have an alcoholic drink without a big thing of water always no. water it's exhausting and you know what everyone knows about me i pee a hundred thousand times a day so no drink as little as water as you can to be healthy <laughs> yeah to survive yeah dry out like that starfish yes i say drink it while you got it and you know, then during the water wars, You'll remember we'll all the talk toilet. about the f the full toilets. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I want to move back to Chicago. I want to be near the fresh water. 
when the water wars start. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, I really do think that. And I, I watched this video recently about Carrington events, you know, this yeah. like a solar storm knocking out all electricity on Earth. Mm -hmm. And I really do think people should have kind of like a few weeks worth of water at the minimum in their house. It's so because because I live in California and earthquakes are like an ever present, uh, you know, looming over our right. heads. Yeah. Right? Um, we're always supposed to have water around. But it's really hard to store. Yeah, it's really hard to store. You can't put it under your bed. <laughs> and it's also like a, it's like a, usually in these plastic jugs where like the water gets disgusting after a little while being in the plastic jugs. So it's like a logistical nightmare to be like, oh, this water's going to go bad. Let's drink it and then re up it. No, that water lasts forever. It's sealed. No, it tastes terrible if it's been, if it's been, in the plastic for like more than x amount of time really oh horrible yeah and i mean it'll it'll do in an emergency you know what that's so funny because we had a, a earthquake expert come and talk to us at my job and he's like and you have to replace your water and people will say it'll do in an emergency when it tastes terrible but it won't it's too terrible to drink <laughs> <laughs> so how quickly does it taste terrible uh, I don't know. I'd have to Google it like a year or two. Especially if you don't have like a well temperatured control apartment. A year or two. Is there anything better we can put it in? Well, you can buy box water, which is really expensive or canned water, which is also really expensive. But canned water is the best way to go. But it's like it's in cans. Like, I don't know. Like, could you get like a big canister? But that's even harder to store. Like a big giant tuna fish can that they make, that they send to like uh, cafeterias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Jeez yeah. Louise. Yeah. All right. Well, stock up water somehow. Consider what we've said. Consider yourselves warned about the water wars. Yeah. I'm sure it's the first time you're hearing about it on this podcast. So <laughs> I'm sure it's the first time you're hearing about it. In a couple of months. It's something we forget about every now and again. But the important thing is that when the water wars happen, we still talk very sweetly to the water we do have. Yeah. Gen Don't mention the water wars to the water. <laughs> Peace and love. And we're going to try that rice experiment. We're going to get back to you. We'll get back to you. Until okay. then, bye -bye. stay hydrated. Bye. <laughs>